I have some small but good news today. Canon just released the Mac version of their very popular webcam live streaming software video conferencing. Let's get into it. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, I'm Simon and this is The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos as they come out. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, including gear discussed, are placed in the description down below. A few weeks ago, Canon released the EOS Webcam Beta Utility Software. Not a customer-friendly name, is it? They really do need to come up with a better name for it once it moves out of beta. Now, if you want to know more about the Windows version, watch this video here. The link is in the description down below. We learned a few things since the Windows release. The software works on way more cameras than the ones listed below. A lot more. It also works perfectly fine outside of the United States. And there are several caveats for both Windows and Mac users. I'm working from home, and millions of you around the world are doing the same. I hate low-quality webcam results. I love being able to use my Canon 70D with a nice wide lens to blur out the background and keep me nicely in focus, giving me that professional business look. Most Mac users are limited to 720p, and even those of us that have 1080 aren't always shown that well. Canon's EOS Webcam Beta Utility allows us to utilize the powerful optics that our Canon and lenses provide and use them to deliver much better professional results when web conferencing or live streaming. This video is not a how-to. Canon already did a great job in their four-step video link below. Canon's video is broken into four parts. The first segment guides you through installation of the software. The second segment guides you through the setup of the camera and the third segment guides you through enabling the software. The final segment guides you through any issues that you might encounter. Well, at least most of them. Now, I'm not here to duplicate the great work that Canon has done. Hanaro and his team did a great job of simplifying things in a very easy to follow video. Watch their video after this video and let them guide you through the setup. I'm here to tell you things that Canon won't cover like extended support. Canon lists the camera supported with the EOS Webcam Beta Utility. Don't be put off if you don't see yours here. When the Windows version came out, we found a lot more cameras worked with the utility than Canon had listed, like my 70D, the Rebel T6S, which is also known in other parts of the world as the 760D, and it worked if you just simply disabled digital zoom. The 70D Mark II worked, as well as the 700D and many, many others. So don't be held off if you don't see your camera there. Just select the camera closest to the one you have. We also found that it worked very well in conjunction with OBS or OBS. And while there is no support outside of the United States, so they say, the software will function perfectly well anywhere around the world. And now for the caveats. It's not going to work with FaceTime. Canon says that the Mac version only works with Chrome, so don't use Safari, and it only works with the web versions of video conferencing software like Skype and Zoom, hence only working with Chrome. Also, make sure the EOS web utility app is closed or the video source image just won't deliver a feed, and set your camera to movie shooting mode. A border will show up around the frame if you've set it in photo mode, and do avoid switching between photo and video modes or turning the camera off. It can take several seconds to regain the live feed when this is done. Only one conferencing application should be used at a time. So close all other conferencing apps while doing a live stream just to avoid any potential issues. Keep in mind, this is beta software. Canon's done a great job, but we're bound to find a few issues along the way. Oh, and one other thing, definitely do not, for whatever reason, it might seem like a good idea at the time, you're, the cable's loose or something, but do not remove the USB cable during a live feed. If you do that, at the very least, you're going to have to restart the application. Worst case scenario, you're going to have to restart the entire Mac. Now, there is one specific caveat related to the M50. Have the LCD open and face towards you to achieve optimal performance. Yep, that's what Canon said, optimal performance. I'm not sure what that really means. If you have an M50, I'd love your feedback, but what I think it really means in Canon speak is, if you don't have that face towards you, it's just not simply going to work properly. Well, that's it for now. Links to everything I talked about in this video, including gear, are found in the description down below. For a full hands-on installation, I highly recommend watching Canon's video. That four-step process really, really helps guide you through things. 
Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.